Hey guys, honestly, Erica, I'm so awkward. I always get so awkward when I haven't done this in a while. Welcome back to Erica's Magical. No, we're just gonna call it Erica's Book Club. That's it. That's all. It's simple. So welcome back to Erica's Book Club. I know I'm a little late with the dark places discussion video. I don't have any excuses. I overthought this video. That's what I did. Thank you to everyone who joined and read Dark Places along with me. I don't know exactly what I want to do with these like videos once we've read the book because I want it to be less of a review and more of a discussion. But then I don't want to give spoilers to any of you who might watch that haven't read the book yet. So I don't know. I'm still thinking about it. I'm not going to give away any spoilers. I'm going to try not to give away any spoilers in this video. But if you guys have any ideas, let me know in the let me know below um, what you guys are thinking. So, OK, so let's talk about their places. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It was I loved it. I loved it. This is like right up my alley. What? I loved it. It was awesome. Um, I mean, it's dark. So it was super dark. There's lots of tragedy, murder, sad, really sad stuff. Dark Places by Gillian or Jillian Flynn. I think it's Jillian. So this book is re written from three perspectives, which I really like that. I did. I've read other books that I've written in like other, you know, I didn't like, I was not a fan. I'm like, please just, I don't, like a lot of times I just get all confused. I don't know who's talking. I think it's one person and it's the other. And it's just stupid. Anyway, but this to me made sense. The main character is Libby Day. She is a 30 something year old lady who has, who at the age of seven, her mother and her two sisters were killed and what is called, I think the Kansas Satan murders. I don't know, I forget. The person who was convicted of killing her family was her brother, Ben. And she helped to put Ben away because she testified at his trial. She was about seven years old. Um, she is, uh, she's a, I liked Libby right away. Um, mostly I liked her because she was just a real person. She was a person who was super troubled she was not a good person she was a person who was like real like she had these horrible things happen to her and she was, had to, didn't deal with them well which who would so she is in her 30s and at this point she has been living off of this like this money that had been donated to her because she was you know the basically the lone survivor in this murder thing and a lot of people had donated money to her and she was she had been living off of that money for 25 years along with a, some earnings that I think she made off of like some really terrible book she wrote and so she is in her 30s and that money is just about gone I think she was down like $900 and she never worked she was pretty much off she was pretty much like a hermit she just stayed at home and she was a violent thief <laughs> who just was like, just like she's true she, I don't want to call her damaged but she was like really I mean like this affected her which who can blame her so she became she's like again she ran through this money which I mean it lasted her 25 years that was like, solid I mean she knew how to um she's pretty thrifty and she's out of money and she's never worked or she's never held down a job she doesn't even know what she would do if she got a job so she's trying to figure out a way to, you know, make money without having to work, which aren't we all. So she gets contacted by a group called the Kill Club, which is this ridiculous, these ridiculous people that are obsessed with like famous murders and mysteries and all these, they're, they're just crazy. So she gets contacted by them. They want her to be a guest at one of their meetings and they are willing to pay her. So she says, okay. First of all, when she goes to this meeting, all these jerks <laughs> like are like so condescending to her and just like, oh, you really think your brother did it? Like, come on. I want it at that point. 
I wanted Ben to be the killer. Just because it would be like, ha, he did it, you jerks. <laughs> She, like uh, the people in the Kill Club, the people that are obsessed with her story, they want to kind of fund her investigation. She's going to start investigating. She's going to start reopening and investigating the murders, the murder of her family on her own. And they are willing to pay her and she is willing to accept that money because, you know, she's broke. So that's what Libby's part is just following her, investigating the murders, talking to people. <sighs> from her past and the people she didn't even know didn't even she didn't even know half the story about what was going on back then because I mean she was seven so but she never really even looked at it again as an adult she never even revisited it as an adult she never even read her her brother would send her letters from jail and she never read any of them she threw them right in the garbage so the other perspective is Patty which um is Libby's mother She's one of the deceased. There. Do with that what you will. And they kind of follow her and what she's going through uh, prior to the murders. And so you get to see like what she was dealing with before she was killed. Um, one, she had been her teenage son who was just she was just really worried about him and she didn't think she was raising him correctly and she thought he was into things that she didn't understand or she didn't know about. She just, everybody kind of thought he was like weird and maybe uh, dangerous. So she was, I mean, he was her son so she loved him but she also was very worried about him and she had this, their father was just like in and out of the picture and just trash. And like she just, you know, she was going through that. And then on top of that, she had to raise her other three children with her, which are her girls. And then on top of that, she is in the process of losing, of losing the family farm, which is their sole source of income. So she just had a lot of stuff going on. She had a lot of things going on. And the third perspective is Ben, who at the time, this is the time prior to the murder. So he's like, 15, I think he was 15 years old and just, all the stuff that he was going through at that time and his, and his story it basically explains like everything <laughs> like his story explains everything like everything is explained when he has his turn so the only thing i really didn't like about the the it being told in three different from three different point of views was that when it would go back to Libby, and Libby was, I love Libby, and she she's my favorite character in the book. But when it would go back to Libby, I knew I wasn't going to find out who the murderer was. <laughs> I'd be like, no, I just want to know who did it. <laughs> really enjoyed the book. I thought it was written excellently. I, although I, you know, I kept having stomach aches because I just wanted to know who did it. I really liked the way that it was told. I liked the three different characters. I liked that we got to see everything from each point of view. So because I'm not giving away any spoilers, I'm just going to ask you guys some questions. These are the kind, these are the things that I was thinking about as I was reading the book. So I just want to know what you guys thought about this and maybe if this was something you guys were like, mm, I wonder, yeah. <laughs> So, so one, what the heck was up with Trey and Deandra? What the heck were they up to? What the heck? Trey and Deandra were Ben's friends um, prior to, right before the murders. Deandra was his girlfriend, which I put that in quotations, she was horrible to him. And then Trey was like Deandra's play cousin. I'm doing so many air quotes. What were they, like, what were they up to? What were they doing? Like, why did they zone in on this kid who literally had nothing? It just felt like they were using him, but I don't know what for because he had nothing. I don't know. And like Trey, like had a car, like this kid rode a bike. I don't even, I don't know. And she had money. Like she was living with her parents who never were there. She had access to their money. She paid their bills. So like, why was she after him for money? He didn't have anything. Before you got to the end and you found out what exactly happened to them, to Patty and her three and her two daughters, who do you think was the killer or the killers? Who do you think was the killer or killers? I'm gonna tell you in the beginning when I first, like I said, when I first started reading and Libby went to that meeting, 
I wanted Ben to be the killer and I just wanted to wash my hands of the area, all of it. I just wanted him to be the killer. I wanted her to be proven right and just be done with it. So, but later on, what I thought happened was I thought Ben killed his mother in a fit of rage and Trey and Deandra were there and Trey and Deandra killed the sisters and they would have killed Libby but Ben kept her hidden because they had like a close relationship. That's what I thought happened. What do you think Libby is doing? Like what do you what do you think happened to her after the book was over? Like what happened to her? Did she finally get her life together? Did she finally get internet? Like did her and Lyle get together? Did Ben help her? Like he said he wanted to. I don't know. It was a good book. I loved it. I really I don't have any complaints about this book it really was very good it kept my attention I just wanted to know who did it so bad the answer to my questions and you know I like let's have a discussion let's talk about it um so the book for February is going to be attachments by rainbow Rao. I already own this book and I really like rainbow Rao. I like the way she writes and I wanted something a little bit lighter not so dark <laughs> and this is kind of funny and just it kind of follows um it's another book that's kind of written in two perspectives there's two there it follows these two ladies who are having an email conversation which is kind of different so it follows them and they're having an email conversation they just talk about life and like they're funny and then it also follows this kid who is hired to monitor the emails at this company it kind of follows his life and like his struggles and that kind of stuff so it's lighter cute read hopefully uh, I am gonna be really really busy in the month of February so I probably won't be back until the middle of March to do my book club discussion so it will give us some extra time it's not a really big book it's pretty small it's only like 300 pages. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to discuss in the comment section below. I'll see you next time. Bye.